Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about droids. Now I think this one's going to be kind of cool. I have chosen an assortment of droids to talk about about five. As usual, usually five is my magic number for this channel. Anyways, uh, okay, well, first off we're going to start with the hangar deck scrubber droid. I just thought this one looked cool, so I wanted to read it. Alright, alright. Uh, see, do, do, oh my god. Oh, hangar deck scrubber droid. Small and boxy Naboo droids equipped with fuel scrubbers. They had dual sniffers to find drops of dangerous leak fuel. Made by industrial automaton, the droids could communicate with the Thee Palace computer system. So this was kind of cool. They were used to find, like, they were used to find, um, bad, um, bad, um, whatchamacallit? Bad, um, bad, Bad fuel, yeah, bad fuel, and like because it might set the palace on fire if you yeah, weren't careful. But yeah, it weren't it actually hurt like the floor or something though. Like it could like make it look more dirty and yeah. Anyways, the next one, um, the see so the next one is the hazard trooper. So it should just be a little bit this way. Let me look for it right quick, and then I'll get back to you guys. Give me a sec. There we are. The Hazard Trooper. Alright. Um, where is it on the map? Oh, yeah. I found okay, here it is. Specialized Imperial Stormtroopers trained to operate in hazardous environments such as extreme temperatures and caustic atmospheres. They wore enhanced armor that served as self-contained environment suits. Oh wait, I'll edit this out of the video. This didn't count. Alright. So I'm gonna scratch that off. Um Okay, so number three, um, is, sorry, number two is Hermos. Let's see, let me look for Hermos. An immense droid that served as not Nescon Talio's bodyguard during the New Order, he resembled a heavily muscled skeleton with a skull-shaped head and a tall frame. When Leo Organa confronted Talio at the Lucky Star Casino on El Rion about, about a hollow cube he had stolen from a Rebel Alliance agent, she was forced to shoot Hermos in order to protect herself. The droid was propelled out a window and fell to the street. So that's it Um, for Hermos, really. He... Just really, um, yeah, he didn't really move much. So here's, here's Harmos. He's, he's right there in the background. This is him. Okay. Next one we have is we have, so this is number three, HK47. Now, I, um, kind of lost some details, so it's only going to be four droids this episode, so this is going to be the third. And then we're going to have one. Uh, it's HK-47. These guys are actually cool. So these are, um, whatchamacallit, they are, um, old Republic droids. These are, um, the ones that were in the old Republic and they're cool. HK-47 droid. This sentient HK serious assassin droid was developed by Caesarca Corporation during the Great Sith War. It once destroyed an entire building in order to eliminate a single target and its merciless pursuit of its target was well known. The droid had a long series of owners and frequent memory wipes. One owner was Darth Raven, who programmed the droid to infiltrate the sand people and gain information about the Star Forge. Raven had HK-47's memories of the mission erased. Later, when Raven turned to the light side and again set off to locate the Star Forge, the droid's abilities proved useful in regaining the trust of the sand people. This allowed the droid to locate the star map on Tatooine. In the wake of the destruction of the Starforge, HK-47 was dismantled and stowed aboard the Ebon Hawk with the Exile, who later rebuilt the droid during the search for Darth Sion. During the Battle of Malachor, HK-47 rallied a group of HK-50 assassin droids to fight back and defeat GOTO. Records fail to indicate what became of HK-47, but there was evidence that the droid managed to store its consciousness in a variety of droid systems over the following millennia. HK-47 reappeared on Mustafar during the Galactic Civil War, leading a gang of automata that killed everything they encountered. 
So he kind of went from war droid to mob boss, but except for droids. Anyway, so yeah, this guy's story is kind of interesting. Raven owned him uh, and used him to get the trust of the Sand People. Then they sold him out with the Star Wars. Then when he turned to good again, uh, he, he had, um, well, after that, the first mission, he erased his memory, okay? And then in, uh, the new one, the new mission, the second mission, uh, he let him gain the trust of the Sand People again. So he got the star map so that he could track down the Star Force and they destroyed it then... On Malachor, he rallied, the HK-47 rallied a group of droids to go against GOTO, which was, like, another droid. They, there was records of him steal, um, stealing, uh, plugging himself into other droids across the galaxy for a millennia, then he reappeared on, uh, during the Galactic Civil War, which is Empire versus Rebel, um, on Mustafar, leading a gang of droids to kill everyone, they, everything they came across. So that's, like... That's to summarize it. That is what happened. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll show you guys him. This is his, this is him. He looks old Republic actually. This is him. This is him during yeah. Technically, that was still in the old Republic. Okay, now this is his. Oh, okay, now this is the um new group of HK. So HK fifty series, combat slash assassin droids produced four thousand years before the Galactic Civil War by Sizerka Corporation. Although Sazurka marketed them as protocol droids, most of the HK-50s were ordered by the renegade droid GOTO and were dispatched from a secret factory on Telos to serve as protocol droids uh, within the naval fleets of the Old Republic. GOTO's army of HK-50s was approached by the rogue droid HK-47 during the Sith Civil War, and HK-47 convinced them to join the fight against the Sith. The HK-50s agreed and helped HK-47 bring down GOTO during the Battle of Malachor. So he then convinced them to go against GOTO, and then they finally killed him, and that is what happened. Actually, here, since we've done four, I will do one more. I will do one more. But here, let me show you the models first. This is them. This is them. They look actually cool. They look sick. All right, next I'm going to do uh, HK-77. A smaller version of the HK-47, it was produced to act as a henchman in the gang that was controlled by an HK-47. So this is one of the um, gang members that joined um, HK-47's league on Mustafar. So this is him. Oh, whoops, a little bit more close-up. This is him. Okay, well anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Um, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!